Hi everyone, today we will continue the implementation on our detector app. So in the last uh, video, what we did was we basically start, we, we basically finished the implementation of like the refactor. This was done already, uh, but we also finished the test. We also did some uh, end to end test, uh, which was kind of cool. And today we start to focus on stop sending the detections via the API and start to persist them in a local queue. Okay, so uh, as a as like a, uh, a spoiler to you, uh, I have done a lot of I have tried some things. Like my my initial idea was to use uh, something like a, some library in Java, which I could use some kind of uh, local uh, queue based on a file. Which I I found some libraries which were kind of old, so they wouldn't fit. The purpose which I wanted exactly, uh, also because I want to use something production ready and something which is uh, up to date. So I decided to use like a messaging queue. So I'm using uh, Artemis, which is like the, if you know ActiveMQ, that's the continuation of ActiveMQ Artemis. Uh, and uh, so I started to configure it, but uh, I started like my idea was to have an embedded server, so I wouldn't like to have a server running outside of the of the detector app especially because that was one of the the main reasons why we are like doing the native compilation right we want to have like a single package where it's ju we just go there and run it uh, but i had so many issues with that because as you can imagine trying to compile like nat natively using raw vm like a like an application or like a, a like a service which is a, a artemis which is a quite mature uh, service it, it's not that easy so i really tried some hours trying to tweak and try to find the hints which we had to do to configure to run. It took longer uh, and I still couldn't, so I was just finding different problems. So I decided to make like a, a shorter uh, solution for us, which is not ideal. So meaning that if, if I had to go to production with this solution, I wouldn't go for it. So that's just a warning to you. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a solution which works. So what we're what we going to do in this class, we start to configure Artemis, but Artemis will be running uh, outside of the application. So we will, we will run this inside the Docker, uh, Docker container and we will connect to it via like normal J, J, JMS connection, okay? Uh, so for sure, if you if we had to implement this in real world, we could maybe like use one of the old libraries that there is available, or we could also try to implement our own solution. That's up to you. Okay, so but in this class then we will be focusing on using Artemis as a, as an outside service, not running together with the application. Okay, so let's go. So uh, first things first, let's just configure our Artemis to run locally. So let's create a Docker Compose here. Um, Docker dash compose.yaml. And I have created already this uh, gist here so we can just come and copy that great so here basically configuring that getting for an, at least till now the latest version uh, which we have alpine i also configured the volume so it means that i want to have like a volume called artemis dot uh, slash data here inside and enabling gms uh, also setting the memory and also defining the user and password there are two parts. One part is for us to use the UI admin and the other is for us from our application to access the GMS connection. Okay. So having this done, I will come to my, uh, to my directory and run Docker compose up. So I expect you to have Docker already configured, right? So we will, okay, we can come here and access this URL and you can see that traffic monitoring, traffic monitoring, we can log in. Okay, so we can see, for example, the queues that we have. For now, we have no queue, like it's nothing. So we have like no, no queue that we have created at least. So we have like the default queues from Artemis and that's it. So that's the first thing we have to do. Now, second thing we have to do, we have to uh, configure, we have to add the Artemis into like the dependency of Artemis Spring. So we have Spring Artemis, Spring Boot Starter Artemis. So we can copy the dependency here and add into our project oops not this let's go and let's let's add the implementation here we can remove the version as you already know most probably remember uh, let's refresh the dependencies here and yeah and that's it so we can go and check here uh, spring boot 
Artemis, there is some things which we have to, to configure. Um, let's see. So we can get one example, for example, GMS example. Let's get a complete one. SRC main. Let's see the resources. Uh, Artemis mode embedded, that's not what we want. We want like, we don't want the Artemis to be started with the application, right? Because we want to do the native compilation. So there is, let, we can go and check something. So Spring uh, Artemis properties, that's easier for us to find out. So, oh, here, I guess, this can look for the Artemis configuration and we can have everything here, right? So let's just pick everything and see what, what works for us. Or in fact, now we are using like the um, <coughs> YAML file, right? So let's see what we need. So Artemis, so embedded false. Let's ensure that this is not true. Spring Artemis embedded equals to false. That's the first thing. What else do we have to do? Uh, host uh, mode. Uh, no, we don't need to do it. So it's basically port, user, and password, and and host. So host, password, port, host. It's going to be localhost. Port is going to be six one six one six. User is going to be traffic monitoring, and password is the same. Password traffic monitoring. Okay, so that's it. Now let's try and let's just have, let's just make a test. Let's come here into our uh, repository and let's try to inject the GMS, uh, GMS template, I forgot the name, GMS template. Let's add the, const the constructor here in the constructor parameter. That's it, that's it. So let's just import and see if it works, okay? So if, if the Spring can inject this class to us, <coughs> this object to us. Yeah, seems to be fine. So now let's try to send something through GMS template, through our through some queue. So we use convert and send. Let's create, a, a, let's call it here, detections uh, queue. Yeah, we can just have detections, we don't have queue. And then we are going to send the detection itself. So detection, or yeah, let's send the registration, right? Registration, and we create here registration. Remove materials, better to, to read. Okay, so now let's see if it works. Let's see if it's sending the message through the queue. Yeah. Looks okay. Let's go through our UI, refresh the page, and we can see the detections. So you see the count, the message count is just increasing. Okay, that's great. So uh, that's the first thing we want to do, right? So it's working fine. If we have to change our test, if uh, now we should we should be changing our test, right? Because we should get the the the, uh, the, the queuing integration. But uh, remember, this external uh, detection repository it's something which I want to make this configurable because let's imagine that, for example, so now the idea for us is that we are going to be uh, not sending the detections uh, to the API directly, but we want to have them persistent in the, into a local queue. And then from this local queue, we will be using this to batch and to like aggregate a list of, of detections and send them, right? So that's what we want to do. Uh, so uh, what we are going to do right now is we are going to have two possibilities. We are going to have two possibilities to 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 handle or to handle the apps, persist or to handle this message. Okay, so we are going to have two implementations for the repository. One of them is going to be the external detection repository, which what we what what this is what we already have. And we are going to implement another solution, which is going to be queue uh, queued detection repository. So this will be an implementation of the repository. Uh, that's the detection repository. And this is going to be based on the, 
let's have the repository here as well and this is going to be based on the GMS so we have final GMS right. yeah let's just copy this the GMS template so this we know nothing about you know nothing about GMS the template itself but this auto implementation will so we add that here at the constructor all fine uh, what else and then here we do the, the the integration so we call the GMS template and we convert and send to detections then we send we can also copy that here the registration so we create a registration and we send the uh, detection itself or the registration sorry so let's also change this detection registrations right which makes more sense we're not going to return anything here from this call from this method call at least we're going to return the detection itself okay so just send it to final final everything here and yeah all good are we also yeah that's it so now part is uh, how do you make our your application uh, flexible for example, um, how do you make, like, imagine that sometimes there could be cases which you say, hey, for some reason, one uh, one instance of this application, I don't, I want this instance to be running and to be integrated directly with the API, for example, because I, I don't know, maybe I don't have Artemis uh, configured. I, I just want, to, I, I have something else. I don't have Artemis configured, so I'm not going to use a queue. I will call the API directly because maybe you don't have resources to run Artemis. I don't know. So, uh, you can do like a, a conditional, you, in Spring you can create conditionals to, to decide which instance is going to be instantiated or which instance is going to be used. So what we are going to do here, we are going to have a conditional on property. Um, so here we can pass, for example, the prefix. So the pre we are going to be doing this based on, let me see, uh, enable, our team is embedded. Let's see. Let's let's try one thing. Let's try with Spring, Artemis, Spring. Then we have that is going to be Artemis dot host. Uh, or better, no. Let's let's do something else. I I don't I, I, I don't want to rely on the Spring uh, configuration because also if they change for some reason any kind of property it it can break us. So. We already have the equipment, we already have the API. Let's have the equipment inside equipment. We are going to have something called mode. And here we are going to have, uh, we can have like the way of our equipment or the, the, way, the, the way the equipment is running. So let's say the, the, the mode execution. We can, we can have like two, for example, now two, execute, two types. We can have a batch uh, or we could also have something like uh, batch or real time let's say real time it will be sending everything or batch it will be sending as a batch so here uh, or in fact no let's let's not talk about batch or real time let's talk about uh, let me think uh, queue or not queue or persistent or not persistent so mode let's say it's a persistent mode okay persistent so if the equipment mode is persistent then we want to have the queue so otherwise we don't want to have the guild so if this spring or not spring then it's going to be equipment value uh, mode and then there is a having value of um, persistent no uh, let's say um, stateless and that's maybe some a better word to use stateless or stateful so if it's a stateless, this is going to instantiate an external detection repository. If this is stateful, we are going to use a, uh, a queued detection repository, okay? So now let's see if this is working as we want. So here, let's put a print LN and say registering via API. By the way, that's something which we have to fix soon, right? We have to, to start to use proper logs here. That's 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 really ugly registering or persisting in queuing in queuing uh, a detection so now we have 
the equipment persistent, not persistent, but stateful. Let's run the application, see what happens. And give me a detection. Now let's say stateless. And let's run the application again. And it goes via API. But let's say if you add something else, like wrong value. That's something which breaks, right? So uh, in the end, your application would break and it says there is no uh, configuration, nothing here. So there are some things which you could do. Uh, one thing which you could do, you could, you could also like on the equipment configuration, um, you could also have this here as an enum, for example. Let's say we have the equipment uh, configuration here. Let's create a mode, mode, and then let's create another enum here, enum mode, and we have uh, stateful and stateless. Then we have the mode here, and uh, let's say now we have, for example, blah. Let's try. Let's start to start the start app. So we basically see that application is complaining because it's yeah it's like stateful or stateless. So now if you come here and say statefuls, statefuls, stateful, and here in config you also have to change. I guess I'm not sure if it's going to be to compare. Let's try. If it's going to compare the string, uh, ignoring the yeah it does it works fine. So stateless or stateful. So. That's it. So we can then at least we can validate, right? If we are passing the right uh, mode or not. So uh, that's it. So I want to keep the, sh the the video not not so long. So that's the first thing we did. Okay. So we did config. So we did configure it. Uh, the the applications run with with Artemis using G GMS, but we still haven't done one thing which we wanted to do, which is what is. Uh, so we did like stop sending detections. We start to persist them in the local queue. Yeah, in fact, we did. The next thing we are going to do, which we are going to do, is to start sending the message from the queue in a batch. So here we are going to change both from the queue and from the API. We are going to start to batch them or to buffer them and start to send them in as a list of detections instead. Okay, so next video, that's exactly what we are going to do. So we are going to first go through our API and create a new version of this API or a new version, not a new version, but a new API, which accepts a list of, of uh, uh, detections. And then in the next video, so we are going to make like a short video to create new API. And then we make another video just on the developer app to, uh, to the buffering. And we are going to, going to do this using Reactor for that. So we're going to buffer using Reactor. And then we are going to be sending or persisting a batch or persisting a list and or sending a list through the API. Okay, that's it. Um, I hope you like the video and I see you on the next video. Bye bye.